One of the major bottlenecks in the performance of the processor is accessing the main memory. So to access the main memory and retrieve words from it takes a lot of time. And one of the ways to avoid this is through a technique which is called memory interleaving. And in this lecture, we are going to discuss the two types of memory interleaving over here. So we have, as of now, think of the main memory as one contiguous unit of addresses. So we have one module and we can have the various addresses over here. So let's say this is address 0, this is address 1, 2, 3 and so on. Now whether these are word addresses or byte addresses depends upon whether the memory is byte addressable or word addressable. Memory interleaving refers to the main memory being structured as a collection of separate modules. So this whole space now we can think of it as being organized in different modules. So now instead of one module, one single module, we will be having different modules and different addresses will be available in these separate modules. So this will allow the memory operations to proceed in more than one module at a time. So if the, the main memory can be accessed parallelly in multiple modules, then the memory access time and retrieval of the word will decrease and this way the rate of transmission of words to and from the main memory can be increased. So here each module has its own address buffer register ABR and data buffer register DBR. So this module let's call it module 0 will have an address buffer register and a data buffer register and similarly the other module or modules will also have these buffer registers. The address buffer register will store the address that has to be accessed and the data buffer register will be dealing with the data that is available at that particular address. And these data buffer registers will be connected to the data bus. So if the, the memory has to be read, then the address will be accessed it will go into the data buffer register and from here it will go on to the data bus. If the memory has to be written into, then again the address will be accessed from the data bus, the data will come in the data buffer register and then go into the, that particular address. So there are two types of memory interleaving that is possible. One is the high order memory interleaving and the other is the low order memory interleaving. In this high order memory interleaving, the main memory address which is sent out by the processor, the low order bits will refer to the address in a particular module and the high order bits will be referring to the module number. So let's say there are n modules, module 0, module 1, module 2, module i and so on till module n minus 1. So these high order k bits of the main memory address will refer to which module we are referring to. So whether we are referring to module 0, whether we are referring to module i minus 1, i or whether we are referring to module n minus 1. The low order bits will be sent to the address buffer register and they will refer to which particular address in that module we want the data to be written to or to be read from. Also in high order memory interleaving, so these high order bits are giving you the module number and the addresses are stored in consecutive locations in a particular module. So this is referring to address 0, 1, 2 and so on. Let's say there are 64 addresses per module. So this will go on till 63, then 64 and so on till 127 and so on. So the, assuming that this is module 1. So this is how we have the high order memory interleaving where the consecutive addresses are in a module and the high order bits 
are used to store or access that particular memory bank or memory module. In low order memory interleaving, the lower bits of the main memory address, now these are referring to the module number. They will specify which module we are referring to and the high order bits will be stored in the address buffer register and they will be referring to the particular address in that particular module. Here the consecutive addresses are stored in consecutive modules. So we have address 0 over here, over here if we have module 1 then it will have address 1, module 2 will have address 2, let us say this is module 3 so this will have address 3 and so on. So the consecutive addresses are in consecutive modules. So we will consider these two techniques using an example. So we are assuming that we are having a byte addressable memory of 64 bytes. So that means since it is byte addressable that means there will be 64 addresses because it is a 64 byte memory. So we are taking a very small example over here. So these addresses will range from 0 to 63. So if there are 64 addresses, so how many bits will be required for this address? 6 bits. That means now the main memory address will be comprising of 6 bits. So this is log 64 which gives us 6 bits. So the memory address register now is going to have 6 bits and this is going to store the 6 bits of the main memory address. Let us assume that our memory is 4 way interleaved. What does this mean? 4 way interleaved means that there will be 4 modules. If it was 2 way interleaved, we would have 2 memory modules. If it was 8 way interleaved, we would have 8 modules. So we are taking an example where the ma main memory is being organized as a 4 way interleaved memory. That means there are going to be 4 modules or 4 banks and let, let us call them module 0, 1, 2 and 3. So if there are 64 addresses and 4 modules that means each module or bank will hold 64 upon 4, 16 bytes. So this let us take an example that the processor sends out this main memory address which is 44. This will be represented by 6 bits and in binary these are the 6 bits of binary representation of 44. So if we count these 1 0 which is 2 bits and 4 bits over here. So 2 bits and 4 bits here. We are taking an example of high order memory interleaving. That means the high order bits will tell us the module number. How many modules are there? There are 4 modules. So how many bits are required to specify the module number? 2 bits because if there are 4 modules then 2 bits are required to specify the module number. So these 2 high order bits from here from this main memory address the high order 2 bits will specify the module number and the low order bits will specify the particular address in that module. So there are 4 modules as we said high order memory interleaving the addresses are stored in consecutive locations in the same memory. We are assuming that each module is having 16 bytes of storage. So address 0 which is byte 0 because this is a byte addressable memory, address 1, address 2, address 12 and so on till address 16. Similarly starting from 16 to 31, 32 to 47, 48 to 63. So these are the addresses that are available. We have to figure out where is this address 44. If you see module 2 is having addresses from 32 to 47 that means it should be here in module 2. Let us see whether we are able to see from the main memory address whether this address will actually be available in module 2. High order bits are going to give us the module number. This is 10. 10 in binary represents 2. So that means this particular address will enable this particular module 2 and we know that 44 will be found in this particular uh, module. 
these low order bits which are remaining now 1 1 0 0 they will refer to the particular address in that module. So if we see that this 110 address will be sent to the address buffer register over here. If you look at the binary representation, this is referring to the 12th word. And if you see over here starting from 32, you will see that byte 44 or address 44 will be found at the 12th location over here. So these lower order bits, that means they are giving the address within the location. So the 12th bit over here is referring to address 44. Let's see how this address will work for the low order memory interleaving. So we have this main memory address 44. These, this is the 6 bit representation 101100. And we said that in low order memory interleaving, the low order bits they represent the module number. Again for module number we require 2 bits only. So this is referring to 0, 0. We also saw earlier that in low order memory interleaving the consecutive addresses are in consecutive modules. That means if we have address 0 here, address 1, address 2, address 3, address 4, 5, 6, 7 and so on. And we will see that address 44 will come here in module 0. We can also see from here from the low order uh, from the low order 2 bits that this is referring to module 0. So here module 0 will be accessed. The high order bits which is 1011 now they will be sent to all address buffer registers but only module 0 has been enabled. So we can get this from module 0 and 1011 we see is 1011 refers to binary representation of 11. So the 11th word over here will be address 44. Also you can see that module 0 will contain these addresses 0, 4, 8, 12, 16 and so on. Module 1 will contain these addresses 1, 5, 9 and so on. So this is how from the main memory address 44 we were able to figure out in which particular module and in which particular address that particular location is available. We saw this for the high order interleaving also where the high order by bits were being used for the module number and we saw it in low, or, uh, me low order memory interleaving also where the low order bits were being used to specify the module number. So what is the advantage now? Now if we see that in low order memory interleaving the advantage is that let's say a word of four addresses of four bytes has to be sent to the processor. Let's assume that that four bytes have to be transferred. So that means all these bytes now will be available in consecutive modules. This module number has been sent to currently to this but now this address has been sent to all the modules over here. So while currently only this module has been enabled but this address buffer register has received these high order bits. So in all the modules the 11th location now can be accessed parallelly in all modules. And when this address changes to 45, that means this will become 0, 1 now. So this whatever has been read and put in DBR over here. So all these main memory modules, they had been accessed parallelly along with this module because the address was available in all of these modules in ABR. All of this data is available in DBR and as soon as these low order bits changes, it is already available in the data buffer register and can be passed on to the data bus very quickly. Compare this to the high order memory interleaving. Once the module has been has come over here, only one data can be transferred. Then in the next, when the next address comes, again this will go to the data buffer register. But here in low order memory interleaving, parallelly the 11th location at all 
in all modules has been accessed and the data has been put in the data buffer register. Now as soon as the main memory address will change to 45 and 46 and 47, these data can be transferred to the data bus. So the advantages are there is reduced memory access latency. So this makes the memory access more efficient. It improves the memory bandwidth as the multiple memory modules are working in parallel. So this causes faster data transfer rates. Also increased memory capacity because this enables use of more memory modules rather than having one single main memory module. We can have multiple memory modules and the capacity of the memory can be increased by adding more modules. So this is in brief the concept of memory interleaving and how it works.